I saved $7,000 by sending an email to my college. I'm gonna go through everything that I have learned and that I've researched so that you can get the best price on your tuition. We'll go through it step by step and then at the end, we'll talk about how we should type the email that might save you thousands of dollars on your tuition. Step number one is to apply to several schools. This is really important because multiple offers will give you more leverage to negotiate your tuition among those schools. And you also should be strategic to which schools you apply to. Obviously apply to the school you want to go to or the couple schools you want to go to. But if that's only a few, I would also try to apply to schools that are known as being cheaper. If your school has a rival, definitely apply there, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. The more schools you get accepted to, the better, but it might mean more work on your part and you might pay more money in application fees. In the end, we want a handful of schools that you've been accepted to so we can leverage the offers to get the best price for your tuition. Step number two is leveraging your offers. Many times the school we want to go to, we'll call it school one, is more expensive than another school that we also got accepted to. And we'll call that school two. In this scenario, we can use school two as leverage to pay less to the school we really want to go to. It is even better if school number one, the place you want to go to, is rivals with school number two, the place that gave you the better offer. You can then show that offer to school number one and be like, hey, your rival is giving me this much more than you, they might be more inclined to match that offer because they don't want you to attend their rival school. We'll go over exactly how you should word that at the end when we're typing up the email, but this is a valid strategy that could save you thousands of dollars on your tuition. Step number three is to look to see if anything has changed. So if you're attending school this fall, that'd be the 2022-2023 school year. That means you would have completed the FAFSA a year earlier in 2021 with 2020 tax information. This means that your financial situation is almost two years old and there could be major changes that have occurred that your school doesn't even know about. If your parents are paying for any part of your school and anything has changed for them financially, you need to tell the college about that. So if there was a job loss or a medical event that required a significant amount of money, or even they change jobs and they're not making as much, anything that you can think of that has altered your family's financial situation, that is something important that needs to be brought up. You can talk about your own financial situation and talk about how much college that you personally have to pay for. And if you're paying for all of your college and your parents aren't helping you, you need to tell them that in this email. Also on the merit side of things, if you took an ACT or retook the SAT during that period and the school doesn't have your scores, you need to bring that up in the email as well. But you just need to make sure you're documenting everything, but just don't tell them information that they already know, like you applied this school and they have your FAFSA. Before we get to the last couple of tips, if you could like this video and leave a comment below, I would really appreciate it. And thank you so much to everyone that has subscribed. You guys are awesome. Step number four is let the college know that they are your top choice. This is really important because a school is not gonna give you more financial aid or scholarship if they don't think you are serious about attending. You should only be negotiating an offer if they are your top choice and you're really excited to attend that school. You are letting them know that the only reason you haven't committed to their school is that you're unable to afford it. That's the message that we're trying to convey in this email. Step number five is to have a specific and realistic number in mind. When you go to type your email, you need to be asking for a specific amount of money that you want your tuition reduced by. When I first sent my email to my college, I didn't ask for a specific amount of money. And the first thing they responded back with was, I can ask for more money for you how much should I ask for? I don't know why I didn't include that in my very first email, but that's definitely something that you need when we type this email so you don't waste anyone's time. You also need to have a realistic number in mind. If your school's tuition costs $20,000 and you're asking for $15,000 in scholarship and aid, you better have a very convincing story or a big problem that occurred for why you need your tuition reduced by that much. 
the last thing you want to do is to turn them away with your very first pitch. So make the number reasonable and be able to explain why you chose that number. If you were leveraging your offers, you might not need to include a specific amount, but for any other appeal, you definitely need to include a specific and realistic number in your email. Okay, so a couple of things before I show you those example emails. It isn't always clear whether you should be sending your email to the financial aid office or to admissions office. If your appeal is more on the lines of financially based, like a job loss or something else that has affected your um, income or your parents' income, then you should send it to the financial aid office. But if it's more on the lines of merit, like you're leveraging offers, that needs to be sent to the admissions office. If you are using like a combination of both appeals, then just use your best judgment on who you think you should send it to. I sent mine to admissions, even though it was more um, financial based, but they'll make sure they get it to the right person. So don't worry about it too much. Second, you need to write in the proper tone. You should be coming off as polite, respectful, and grateful. Don't sound like you're begging or that they owe it to you to give you more money. Have an appreciative attitude when you write this. Thirdly, you need to provide um, documents and evidence for whatever you're claiming because they will ask you to back that up. So just be honest in what you're saying. And lastly, don't call it a negotiation. Um, college admissions and college offices don't really like, like that word. It's just kind of a weird thing. Even though you are negotiating, just don't call it a negotiation. Okay, so now let's talk through how we should actually write this email. I'm gonna go over several scenarios that I think will fit most of our audience's situations. So whether all of these apply to you or just one of them applies to you, you'll still be able to negotiate your college tuition. Okay, so our first appeal is gonna be a financial need appeal. We'll start it off addressing the financial aid officer. If you have the actual name, that works um, better, just make it professional. And then I've recently received my financial aid package and upon review, I'm concerned with my ability to pay for this education. My financial situation has changed since I completed the FAFSA, which has greatly affected my ability to pay. Remember, we're giving them new information here. They might already know your financial situation. And if nothing has changed, then the argument isn't as strong. You could still include things that they may already know, but this should be new information to them. So like I put a couple examples there, but if someone got injured, a job change, um, medical event, um, something that big hap that happened that they might not be aware of, you need to explain that and explain exactly what happened and why it has affected you financially. And then I said, considering that, could my financial package be reevaluated? To make this affordable for me, I'm asking for an additional $5,000, whatever is appropriate in your situation, in aid per year. Blank University is my first choice and the only thing keeping me from confirming my decision is the cost. If there's any other information that you need from me, please let me know. Thank you so much for your time and have a great day. And that's it. You can keep it simple. Um, you can expand on what your financial situation is and any other information they might need to know. And I just, I broke these up into like this one's just financial need and the next one's about leveraging your offer. So like you could combine um, a couple of these, but it doesn't need to be long. You just need to tell them that they are your top school, ask for the specific amount, and then present your case. Scenario number two is leveraging your offers. And in this one, I put Dear Admissions Officer because this is more of a merit appeal, so it probably should be sent to the admissions office rather than the financial aid office. Not a big deal if you mess it up though. And then I put the same sentence for all of these. So come with whatever sentence you want, but I just say I received my financial aid package and I'm concerned with my ability to pay. Something along those lines, however you want to start it. And then in this scenario, I put um, the University of Michigan as the school we want to attend and Michigan State as the school where we got the better offer. So I put, I've received another offer from Michigan State University for $18,000 per year. And remember, you don't have to ask for a specific amount um, in when you leverage offers, you're just asking them to match what the other school is giving you basically. So I put, is there any way that we can bridge the gap between the offer that I received and the offer that Michigan State gave me? The University of Michigan is my first choice and the only thing keeping me from confirming my decision is the cost. Attached is my offer from Michigan State. If there's any other information that you need from me, please let me know. Thank you so much for your time and have a great day. So pretty simple, you just, 
present what the one school gave you and then ask can we match this or lower this because i really want to attend your school that's all you're saying with this appeal okay so scenario number three is improving your test scores and again i put admissions officer because it should be going to the admissions office um, the same sentence i'm concerned with my ability to pay since my acceptance i've retaken my act or sat and i've improved my score from a 24 to a 28 could I receive additional scholarship now that I have improved my test score? I'm asking for an additional $5,000 per year, again, whatever is appropriate, to help meet my financial needs. Blank University is my first choice, and the only thing keeping me from confirming my decision is the cost. My improved ACT scores are being sent over now, and I also attached a screenshot of my scores. If there's any other information that you need from me, please let me know. Thank you so much for your time, and have a great day. So. Again, straightforward, you're just saying, I've improved my test scores, can I have this much more in aid or scholarship? Okay, so you might be thinking, those scenarios are great, but none of them apply to me. I don't really have a reason for the school to lower my tuition. This is what I call the default response. So if you have no situation where you think like something has changed financially, you've improved test scores, um, you don't have a better offer, you have nothing that you can think of, this is something that I would do. So I put financial aid officer and then the same sentence, concerned with my ability to pay. But then I say, I'm responsible for paying for half my educational costs and I do not intend to take out student loans to pay for school. Is there any way that I could receive an additional $5,000 in scholarship per year to help meet my financial needs? At that level, I will be able to work part time and adequately pay for school. Blank University is my first choice and the only thing keeping me from confirming my decision is the cost. If there is any other information that you need from me, please let me know. Thank you so much for your time and have a great day. So like, I didn't really even give a, an actual reason. I just say I have to pay for some school and you can say whatever your situation is, just like give them a little bit of information and see if they'll lower your tuition. Everyone should try negotiating your tuition, no matter who you are, no matter what your situation is. So use some type of default response like this. Like I didn't give a clear cut reason for why. I just say, um, I'm not really able to afford it. I'm working part time. Can I have this much more? And that will meet my need to pay for this college. So definitely negotiate your tuition, no matter what your situation is. You probably would have never guessed it, but that last response was almost exactly what I said to get $3,500 off of my junior and senior year of college. I was a transfer student, so that's why it was just my last two years, but everyone needs to be negotiating their college tuition because the worst thing they say is no, but you could potentially save thousands of dollars, so you just have to negotiate your tuition. But thank you so much for watching, and if you like videos like this, please consider subscribing, and I'll see you in the next one.